morning, everyone. I'm Isis Scott. And I'm Johanna Salinas. For this week's newscast. As we head into spring break, many of us will be traveling, which means germs and diseases will tend to linger. Let's hear more from Kalia. Today we'll be talking about sickness and how quickly it can spread. Now let's get started. 100,000 germs can be in a single sneeze alone. When you blow your nose, make sure that you use hand sanitizer or wash your hands after. Germs can easily be spread by shaking hands. Hugging others could also contribute to passing germs as well. Always stay safe and prevent germs from spreading. Kalia Wainwright, BD TV. Being able to drive is a privilege, but is parking a problem? Let's hear from Gabby to learn more. Good morning, Giants. The student parking lot has been a hot topic. So today we're asking teachers and students their opinions on the student parking lot. My opinion that is not getting used properly. I have children ages three, four, and five coming to school and it's not always safe for them because the student drivers are not seasoned drivers, so they're distracted by their friends, so they are not looking for pedestrians. Everyone needs to have a tag and you, they need to display it. Is it fair for teachers to park in the student parking lot? I don't think it's fair because teachers do have um, designated areas for their parking, but if we were to park in their spots, we would be threatened to be like have tickets, get like write-ups, like I don't think it's fair. The fact that students don't get to park in teacher parking lots and teachers get to park in ours, I don't believe it's fair. Uh, even if they are a freshman teacher, I believe they should park in a teacher parking lot. What do you dislike about the student parking lot? I really don't understand why like, we have to park by the freshman center if we can't even walk through. It could be like two degrees, we don't have a delay or anything, or it could be really, really hot in the summer, and we still have to walk the Green Mile just to get into school. You're not able to move your car after school. So by the time that we end our rehearsal practice, it's dark and we have to walk far to the student parking lot and that's dangerous, mostly at night. Gabrielle Mobley, BDTV. The Rising Young students not knowing much about post-secondary education and its affordability is an all-time high. But the Bafra College program at Indiana University Bloomington is helping with just that. This is a grant funded program hosted at Indiana University, Bloomington, Indiana. Balfour is free to all juniors in high school across the world. The program emphasizes on teenagers of any minority, that being one of the requirements to join the program. I was fortunate enough to be a part of Balfour Scholars 2019. Over the summer, I learned culture identity, post-secondary education, and what it's like to live on college campus. And throughout the summer, I made a whole new group of friends. The deadline for this college preparatory program is March 31st, 2020. Good luck to all my current juniors. Dana Wilson, BDTV. Everyone has a story. Here are three of our own BDTV students with theirs. Hi, my name is Destiny Jones, and I have started drawing ever since I was little, from scribbling to sketching and more. Getting to create whatever you want by hand is something quite special. These are artworks that I made in one of my art classes. I made a mistake with a drop of paint on the artwork of mine. Uh, it was probably like one of these, but then I actually made that part of the painting and made more like spots and splotches all over it, which made it more of an energetic type of environment. Sometimes I'll have a theme and try out a style, which is always fun. When it comes to making art, it will take some time to develop good skills and your own style. If you want to be able to do that, then just begin to practice and practice every day or every few days. And soon, you'll see improvement in your own art skills. Good morning, I'm Najia Payton here with the weather update. Today it'll be chilly with a high of 28 and a low of 13, so I hope you brought a jacket. Saturday will be sunny, but still on the colder side with a high of 30 and a low of 20. Sunday looks to be partly cloudy with a high of 42 and a low of 29. Monday may have some freezing rain in the morning, then later that day we'll have a few rain showers. High of 49, low of 43. Tuesday warms up with a high of 51 and a low of 46, but still with a 50% chance of rain. Wednesday also has a 50% chance of rain, with a high of 43 and a low of 35. Najia Payton, BD TV. Thanks, Najia. 
I'm Lenny Collier here with this week's community calendar. Within the next few weeks, there are several fun activities to partake in. First up, choir has several performances at Mooresville, North Central, and Lawrence Central. Make sure you get out to support your fellow giants. If you're into scary movies, A Quiet Place 2 premieres on March 20th. Head to your local theater to watch the movie. On March 21st, Acapella Live will be at Clues Memorial Hall at Butler University. Go to Ticketmaster.com to buy your tickets for this high energy group. Now let's see what's going on at Ben Davis. The Riley Dance Marathon is an event where people come together and stand on their feet for children at Riley Hospital. On April 25th from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. in the Ben Davis High School MPA, there will be multiple things to do. Games, competitions, dancing, and you will be able to hear stories from Riley Hospital families. If you would like to get involved, please contact Ms. Offen. Chapel will host a career center fair where it show all the careers Ben Davis has to offer. I think it's really important, especially to get the exposure to them so they can at least have an idea. They might not know what they want to do when they're older, but getting their hands on some of the equipment, being able to see everything, talk to people, it kind of sets in their mind like, I really liked that. And then it just, as they get over to the high school, I think it just helps them and really kind of sets that career for them. S is for success. So to recap, if you one, complete your credits toward a diploma, two, gain employability skills through impact lessons, and three, meet one of the following, earn an academic or technical honors diploma, meet the cut scores for the SAT or ACT, earn a passing score on the ASVAB, or if you're successful in earning AP or dual credits, or lastly, if you earn an industry certification or apprenticeship, congratulations you have met the state requirements for graduation, which ultimately means success. It means that graduation pathways are a win-win formula for whatever your goals are after high school. So get on board and find a pathway to success. Welcome back Giants. As we look forward to March, the madness continues. Let's hear from Zion for sports. Good morning Giants. I'm Zion Brown, and as winter athletics start to wind down, it's a light week in sports. Let's get to the action. Last Friday, the boys' basketball team fell at Cathedral 64-50. The Giants will host their senior night tonight against Arsenal Tech. BD will then play at Southport against the Cardinals in the first round of sectionals on Tuesday. The boys' swim team placed fourth in sectionals last week at Decatur Central. Although no Giants advanced the state, seven out of eight swimmers achieved their personal best. Congratulations to the swim team on their improving season. Keep supporting the boys basketball team as they head into tournament time next week at Southport. Zion Brown, BD TV. Now let's take it to Jaden as he previews the city's upcoming sporting events. In the next few years, Indianapolis will be receiving several huge sporting events. In March, the Big Ten Tournament and NCAA Regional Basketball Championship will be held here. In 2021, the NBA All-Star Game and NCAA Final Four will be held in Indy. In 2022, the College Football National Championship will be played in Indianapolis. We talked to sports analyst Jay Arnett about these events. The events, you know, draw so much attention to the city and it just makes the city as a whole look, um, look warming and looking welcoming for people that are watching us. The city is not yet done trying to bring these new events. Um, the Super Bowl was here uh, a couple years ago when the Patriots played the, uh, um, the Giants and it was, a, it was a successful Super Bowl because they had a lot of functions and activities and events for the fans. While these events are very exciting, it's no easy task to put together. Yes, and it takes, you know, really about, you know, if you have a good marketing team, I would say like three months. But if you don't have a good marketing team, I would say six months. With all the events coming to Indianapolis, make sure you get out and participate. Jaden Perkins, BDTV. Many students around the school are finding ways to earn money and starting their own business. Here's one of our own. What got me into doing hair is my mom. My mom has 
been doing hair for 15 years. She's a hairstylist. She just taught me how to braid and I expanded from there. I started off with my mom teaching me how to braid just regular plaits and then I just expanded from there and started just trying things. I started to paint on the jean jackets because it's the closest thing to canvas. I paint a lot on canvases. I wanted to wear my work. I wanted to show people what I did. The way I balance my school life and my business life is never procrastinating. Don't procrastinate. If you want to get something done, you need to do it now. because we moved up um, a place from what we did at first when we performed and we worked really hard so I'm proud of us and we're only going to go up from here. Overall, my day was pretty good. I saw the Flanagan ED TV. I'm Lenny Collier and this is a day in my life. My day starts typically at 5.20 to 5.30 in the morning and I get up and get ready for school and then they say bye to my dog and then head out the door to go to my home school to get on the bus to go to the Area 31 Career Center. Once I get here, I say hi to my friends and then I start filming, editing, or whatever else I can do that day. And then at about 10, I say bye to everybody and head back to Cascade. Once I'm back, I say hi to my friends and we go to English and then we go to lunch and then I go to choir and studio voice and then I go home. And I'm only home for about two hours before I have to be back at school for musical. And then I leave rehearsal and head to dance and here's me dancing with some of my dance friends. And that's a day in my life. Lainey Collier, BDTV. Hey guys, so what is Leap Year? Leap Year was invented 2000 years ago by, the general, by basically the emperor of Rome, Julius Caesar. Basically, it added one more day to the shortest month of the calendar, February. Now, people don't know why, but I'm here to explain that. Leap year is when we add another day every four years to the shortest month of the year, February. The only notable person known to have been born and died on February 29th was a guy named James Wilson. The Honor Society of the Leap Year Babies is a club for people born on February 29th. There's about 10,000 members in this group. When we think about high schoolers, we think of young people living their teenage years to the fullest by going to hang out with friends, staying up late trying to complete homework, getting their learner's permit and driver's licenses, and creating memories and experiences that won't be offered to them later in life. Do you think high schoolers should have to worry about whether or not their life-saving medication should be provided to them? All through the United States, people struggle to get basic medical needs covered through insurance. Most people can't afford medical services out of pocket and rely on insurance to live comfortably. Every year, 200 million claims are rejected, according to AARP. There is a wide range of reasons why insurance providers deny these claims, such as insufficient medical necessity, coverage terminated, no prior authorization, or services excluded or not covered. High school senior Devin DeBroth found out after his 18th birthday that his insurance company would no longer pay for the medication required to manage his rare brain disease called superficial siderosis. 
His medication costs around $6,000 per month, a cost too high for most families in this country. Do you think insurance companies should start to act quicker and not have the power to decide what is or isn't medically necessary? Malachi Walker, BDTV. I kind of knew it, this whole death job, but you're supposed to get your soul last week. You were in an accident. You weren't supposed to walk away from it. Right. Who are you? Death. Didn't I already explain that? Death? Yep. Yeah. The new one. Yeah. It's I, a new job. I don't know if I believe you. I'm going to go back to class. Who are you talking to? The guy right there. What guy? The dude who just said he wanted my soul. You need help. Yeah. Don't I recognize you from somewhere? That's all for this week's newscast, Giants. We hope you have an amazing weekend and to stay safe. As always, if, if it's, it's about, about you and me, it's on BDTV. TV.